Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. So we're doing a special series of podcasts which I'm recording over Google Hangouts. So we're doing audio and video because for some unknown reason, people don't wanna come see me face to face right now. But there's always opportunity and the cool thing is I'm able to now podcast with people from all over the world. So we're gonna get an amazing eclectic mix of people from, from different industries, different perspectives to share their story and tell us you know, their thoughts and feelings on what's going on right now and all of that cool stuff hope you enjoy it please subscribe in all the usual places and enjoy hey guys welcome to the podcast um I'm really happy to have joseph from project utopia join me today how you doing i'm good man i'm good um this is a crazy time you know how it is um again we just started recording early i'm like let's just let's get a show on the road you know i'm i'm, I'm this is exclusive for me first podcast been featured in all the telegraph and the forbes and like i said and production for documentaries in africa but this is my first podcast that i'm not hosting or been in hosting of and i'm keen to discuss and hopefully hopefully my brand director don't kill me <laughs> definitely it's very different being on the other side of the mic as well isn't it um you're like Asking questions is easy because you can just hide behind the question and you've got to answer because I've asked you the question. Um, but when yeah. you've got to answer, different. It's fun. I like it. I pivoted to also video cast as well, given the uh, the lockdown and stuff. So yeah. how are you finding it being at home and stuff? Um, you know what? It's a bit of a it's a bit of a mixed bag. Um, we're in a really weird paradoxical kind of environment right now. Um, I, for one, I found it interesting and, and, and weird. Um, you might get some things on the computer, by the way. Um, and it's one of these weird things that, like, you know, the, the, the isolation is causing productivity, which is causing more, you know, at home angst, I suppose. You're, you're living with people in a new environment, which can both be beneficial and detrimental. And it's just understanding what isolating really is, you know? And it's a weird one. It's just it's just a unique time. and and it's a really, really difficult place out there in the world at the moment. And and my wishes go with everyone. I recently lost someone and, and it's suspected COVID. So um, yeah, lost it. it's uh, my nan actually. So, so yeah, it's impacting everyone's lives, but I think that there's going to be a big, big change for humanity at the end of it. That maybe it's, maybe this is what, what humanity needs to come together and, and, and unify our, our, our thinking, I suppose, and, and be more kind to each other. Yeah. You know? And that's where I birthed the topic. I and mean, we'll get onto that, I suppose. Yeah, that's true. It's funny, right? Like Mother Nature is very humbling. Yeah. You know, she's basically told us, like, stay in your room for. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to sort myself out because you've been polluting me for God knows how long, which yeah. links really nicely to what you guys are up to. And uh, and there's nothing you can do about it, right? You're just sitting at home and we'll get let out when we get let out. Yeah. Um, and in the meantime, um, there's less pollution. I live in London and yeah. cool, there's like a lot less cars on the road and it's quite nice actually. It's just not being yeah, so well, good. You know, it's mad. Do you know it's mad? Like um obviously like we get into it, but I've, I've built houses that I can't really, you know, say reverse climate change, but in principle it's more efficient than planting trees per square meter, uh, a building unit. And like I've been in, in, in the forefront now for I suppose the last week of climate change and, and what we've been doing and it's ref it's 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 weirdly refreshing to go outside in London and have space and and be out of breathe. And it's again, it's just a weird. It's like upside down, really upside down. You know what's going on. It's a bit me. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. How have you adjusted then? Like you sound like quite, you know, extrovert. You put you like being around people. I guess. I mean, how, how have you found like having to adjust to working from home? Like I suppose I'm, I'm one of these like. You know, it drives back to, I suppose, what generation you are in a sense. Um, I try to find people kind of like, if you were born between 1990 and, and 2000, like a bit of a golden generation where we had the adaptability to have social, real social introduction and an upbringing where, you know, in technology wasn't taking over our lives, but we've adopted and grown up with it. So in my world, I'm kind of like, I can do <laughs> the Joe thing in person, but hell, I can do it behind a computer too. So um, I suppose it's really easy to adapt with, with things and I'm finding it quite an interesting dynamic to be able to kind of have these discussions with people in a new a new way. And um yeah. I ain't got I ain't got where to get dressed up all the time, which is which is dope because I hate I hate the archetype of having to wear suits and all that jazz. I've wore a pretty shirt for now, but it's nice to be a bit casual That's with as far as well, I as I leader, you're actually like founder and leading a company and hmm. suddenly you know your employees are at home. How, how have you gone about adjusting your 
or have you had to adjust your leadership style to keep everyone engaged? It's been a madness. Um, we were, we were like hyperscaling. Um, so we were, you know, they, you hear their terror stories of hyperscaling and what detriment that can cause in a business. Can you imagine hyperscaling and then having to scale back immediately whilst, whilst the demand for our product goes through the roof? Wow. Um, because, yeah, because well, look, you're gonna we're gonna lose like 120,000 houses. They need to be they need to be smarter. They need to be more pure. They need to be greener. They need to be you know better performing. And we tick all those boxes. So it's like we it's the management side of it all. As you re I've really had to adapt to understanding operational process needs to be in place. You still got to inspire people, but you still got to get the work done. And and that is a very unique mix. I think we'll come out of this like with a whole new way of thinking and on how you get the best out of members. We've just introduced a, a program at the moment, which is like free online earning on Uberland. We're like encouraging everyone, like, hey, look, we're, we as a company, we'll, we'll, we'll help that, you know, we'll work towards that with you because we want you being the best you. So when you come out of this, we can be the best collective together as a team. And it's just a weird one, man. Again, it's like, it's one of these, like, I suppose it's such a unique role. It's such a unique environment. And you've just got to ride the wave and, and, yeah. and strategize. And yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Are you doing like daily Zoom calls and like all of that kind mm. of stuff? Quizzes and Con yeah. Constant man, constant. Um we just another thing, we migrated. I'm I'm a Google head. You originally I love driving stuff. And um because of a innovation technology we're working on as a program, we had to move over to an ERP system. So we ended up moving off to Microsoft, but we moved over to the whole Microsoft suite for the whole company as lockdown happened. Oh wow. So that that's been a I was Zoom and Google Meets, then I'm Teams, and now I'm Teams, and there's all sorts. So it's been a bit of a, that again in itself has been a bit of a mad transition. But, you know, every day is phone calls, video conferencing, yeah. you know, yeah. um, try to get a workout in the back garden when I can. Myself and some good Nick, I'm currently vegan. Uh, I have been for a while now, you know. How long, how long have you been vegan for? I think I've been vegan now for about almost six months. Um, cool. What was the driver? Uh, got to fight a good fight. I was... I've always been conscious of um, one calorific intake and your body's ability to digest me. I'm a learner. Like I like to learn, like I have no formal qualifications. Um, I'm self-taught, but I'm like thermodynamics, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, gaming engineers. Like I, I just learn online. Right. So I've always been a keep an eye on like, what is nutrition? And I've always understood that as much as I love the steak, actually yeah. what impact does that have on the digestive system? And then what the impact does that have on a planet, you know? And so, I met with a really cool guy called Simon Howard, uh, Steve Howard, sorry. Um, and Steve Howard was the uh, IKEA's big director, and he was leading this charge on um, Carbon Zero campaign. You know, we're working with it in the UN initiative and stuff now, but it was, he was going for like Mars stand up and stuff. And I met him, and he, he explained to me the full carbon impact, um, the stuff you don't see, the stuff that you don't hear about. And I was like, wow. So I went pescatarian for a bit. Um, and then um, I learned more about fish farming and how that's causing disease and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and now I've become a dog chef because you have to when you're a vegan, but it opens your palate up somewhat and your nutrition goes through the roof. The whole misdemeanor of, hey, you know, you can't get the nutrition. Oh, I love nonsense. Um, I'm probably, you know, I, I've got more vitamins in my body than I've ever had and I'm healthier than I've ever been. So you just, you have to, it's just not being lazy. <laughs> so that's, you, it, you know. Do you feel better? Like, do you, can you notice, like, you actually feel better on it without a doubt but your, body, your body's ability to process meat if it's red dense meat can take up to an hour with vegetables 15 minutes depending on how you cook them it's no more than 20 minutes right 25 minutes you know people correct me if i'm wrong I'm not a biologist um but from from readings and, and from understanding the knowledge i'm also i'm suffering from an autoimmune condition I imagine we'll get into that as well but um that not dropped out weak from my diet so what i've got now is my body is cleansed all the time so like constantly i can graze and eat and it's like cleaning itself out and you feel lighter you feel better you eat when you need to eat you don't set this free meal a day you don't need five fruit and veg a day you know five fruit and veg all right go eat five bananas a day bro you've got too much potassium like you go have five pineapples that's a lot of pineapple you've got a lot of sugar it's about just eating when you really need to and what i've learned being a vegan is you then get practical with your with your with your um with your materials you know and so i'm like cooking in a way i've never cooked before i'm preparing food in a way i've never prepared before my meals are taking half you know half the time because i ain't banging stuff and leaving any you know, fresh preparing that food and you find yourself enjoying food a lot more um and then you know you don't have to worry about you know you're having an impact on putting the world on fire because you're creating methane outputs or you know you're killing baby chicks for eggs you yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs>
apart from that stuff, I mean, certainly now, right, with the virus, I mean, a lot of the people who are really suffering, um, apart from people who are older, um, have underlying health issues, right? Obesity, diabetes, like all of those kind of things. So, I mean, eating well, whether it's vegan or, or eating cleaner than one would normally, regular exercise, good sleep, just gives you such a better chance of fighting off these viruses, diseases and stuff. And, and for me also, it's just, I, I eat pretty clean. I'm not vegan. I eat really clean. Most of it's vegetables and stuff. I do a lot of exercise. More now I'm locked down than ever. And it's just so good for my mental health as well. You know, loads of yeah. different things going on. You just think really clear. Um, it's important to do. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. It's, again, I think, I think this time is going to create a new dynamic for humanity. Um, and you'd be surprised at the health benefits, you know, you know, that healthier living, you realize your body's got to fight a good fight. You know, you can't believe in antibiotics all the time. So what if an antibiotic ain't there? All of a sudden, the antibiotics aren't there because they don't exist yet. And our body now has to take the burden of stress. And so we need to keep it in as good, good a shape as possible. It doesn't mean being OTT, but it does mean not going and eating a hamburger every day because it's quick and easy. It does mean thinking about your impact and also be conscious, you know, the world's on fire because of us. And we've got to think, how do we how do we just make minor changes in our life that don't affect us, that are more around self-need, you know? Do you have to go and eat fast food? Do you have to go and eat beef every day? Or do you just want it? And maybe we think about less about what we want and what, what people need, and that makes you a kind of human. If you're a kind of human, we're all going to get along. And then we can all go for a beer in a beer garden when all this is over and have a laugh. But, you know, yeah. there's stuff being consumerism and, and gluttony based based things as, as we and, we and we've learned this you know we've seen it i, I really love our generation's take on this you know whether it's greta whether it's david attenborough or whoever it is you know they're, they're showing that we care we get well I don't know if I swear, but we give a fuck and that, that's the rules and we care. yeah yeah well you can see like it's great like you see like there's deer in essex dolphins yeah. in, uh, in venice dolphins in malaga i mean even like what four five weeks of just humans chilling out a little bit nature's starting to get back into the places that they that they used to occupy so yeah and, and, and you know if anything this doesn't take away from 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 the damage that is being done to society it actually makes us wiser to it it makes us look at it and go holy shit man people are suffering and if we did just take stock of what we do together and we were a little bit more of a community then we would be in a better place right now and if you know there is the NHS and the key workers that are doing the, fighting the good fight on the front lines, and hopefully it's companies like us that are starting up or in, in, in hyper growth that can help excel that that pickup off the back of it. Um, but we know the bad's going on, and it's good, it's good to just take stock of it and realize you can make changes in your life day to day. You know, it's funny we've got to live with ourselves more than we've ever had to. We're yeah. noticing patterns in our own behaviour, and I think that's quite. Unique. And I think that's going to really, you know, you open your eyes because you've got to live with yourself. You realise you, you're a bit of a nightmare to live with on yourself. Then you might realise you might need to be a bit of an easier person to be around. Do you know what I mean? I think it's just a self-enlightening environment we're in. But unfortunately, it's come off the back of something so harsh and devastating. So it's just, a, again, it's a weird paradoxical time that we've been as in. It's a funny one. I just wonder whether in the post-COVID era, whether us humans will learn from it. Yeah. Or are we going to get crack on back to... You know, like growth, 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 consumerism, um, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Because you can kind of see it going either way, right? Well, yeah. And I think I think it is the policymakers that are going to make these decisions. We're noticing a trend at the moment that we've got, you know, we'll get into what I kind of do. But yeah. we know patterns as an, you know I mean? as an Ecutech company, you know, we're energy construction, intelligent technologies. We're not a real estate company, we're a prop tech company with energy construction, intelligent technologies. And we're noticing across the board. Um, implementation and, and, and uptake of new policy and that will reflect on how we come out of it because if they lay the groundwork now that says coming out of this well you can't just capitalize it will then set trend of the way we live forward if those things don't happen then we're going to be in a position where things go back to normal and I think it's, and we're, we're not seeing it happening, you know, we're, we're, we're in, we're in the lead of some of these decisions and, and groups of people that come together to make the fight that good fight, you know, off the back end of this and set new standards and set new programs and set new policies. Definitely. No, I hope that happens. Go winding back to you then. So what's your background? So, um, I have a pretty awful harsh background to be honest with you. I was homeless first at 15 years old. I had an alcoholic abusive father. I had my mom. Um, was sectioned when I was 15 years old. 
um, with mental health issues. Um, she's fortunately wonderful and she's recovered. She's taken experiences of the hardships of my teenage life and, and her section into their work as a key worker, helping Brilliant. people get to work and helping young people get into work. So she's like, she's an amazing woman um, that's, that's kind of done that. But yeah, like it was, it was shit. <laughs> um, was this I, in London? No, this is all about, so, so I was originally from North London and then I moved out to Essex and spent a lot of my homeless time in Essex. And I was homeless, on, I was homeless four times, um, you know, a couple of sofa surfing, a couple of trips to sleep in a park, a couple, you know, a couple, like, a couple of stays here and there in different places. Like you've got like Chess Foundation in Chelmsford and places like that, which give you a roof over your head for the night. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I was involved in the dark side of life. I was, you know, doing a lot of things that, mate you do when you're homeless you do you know there is a certain standard of class of life where, where where recreational ability to recreation is is created by by things that are street work street like and yeah it was a really hard time i battled some different you know levels of, of issues and addictions and things like that and um in t when i was 21 after i, I then long you know, that, like from 15 to so like 15, 20 yeah yeah so like 15 right through to on and you know in and out of homes da, 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 um, not homes like ha, 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 um often homes, but like homes is in terms of like places to live and stuff my mom's in and out of hospital and we try to get together and there's a part when i was even younger i was in a women's refuge running away from my dad and things like this and then it amalgamated and i actually tried to turn my back on that kind of darker side of life because i was sick of being caught up in the whirlwind of, of the street kind of environment and the bullshit and um i turned and I tried to go in the army. So I didn't have any GCSEs. I dropped out of school and you know, never really made anything out of school. I went to multiple, you know, here and there. And um, I tried to go in the army. And then I, you know, I found a route that was going to get me to the quickest. I got one of the highest grades that they'd seen come out of Colchester. My barb test, they couldn't believe it. My barb test, which is an acumen test, was off the charts. They were like, we've never seen a score that high. And I didn't realize I had the ability to learn like I did, right? So I'm just a kid getting in all sorts of trouble. Because I had this life, I had no idea that in the back of my brain I've got this ability to pick up knowledge like that. Um, so yeah, went in and then um, I got in a bit of a ruckus. Um, long and story short, in in Colchester before I went in, and it turns out that I was blinded on my left eye. So when I went into the army, we got a couple a few weeks in, and um, they were all we doing rifle and all that good stuff and that training and stuff. And they realized that I had no peripheral vision on the left side. And they were like, hold on a minute, what's going on? I went in, turns out I had to test by my retina. Medically discharged, homeless again, had nothing. Coming out of the of, of the army, I literally had nothing. Um, British Legion supported me with enough, with a 1,500 pound um, check. And that was uh, like, a, that was it. And I had, to, I had to go out alone. And that was when I had a really hard time. I got caught up in something that I shouldn't have got caught up in. And I had 21 hours um right. done the research i brought over my mate he was a royal angling because he dealt with death in afghan um got drunk i had drinks with him he put down the couch and half a bottle of vodka because i read on the other half as we were drinking together and uh back basic pain to grow the mold i was on for my eye um went to sleep crying to myself and feeling guilty recently just before that like a year before that my uncle committed suicide it was a difficult time and then um said goodbye to everyone and then about three hours later i woke up vomiting projectile vomiting all over myself my ang my mate woke up dragged me off like, what are you doing you idiot da -da -da, rough hush up this thing down my throat da -da -da -da. um and then i was like well i can't even if i can't do this then i best turn this into something and that is when the utopia journey started and that is when i set my mind to be trying to build a better world for people that are in less 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 privileged environments to give them the step up they need and that amalgamated me into developing these technologies um, and building an utopia, which is an economic and environmental utopia for the future generations. And I'm proud to say that we're the first company in history to ever build two energy positive build solutions of its kind with intelligence um, in the scale we have in the UK and the county town replacement in Namibia. Um, and we're going global. So, you what know, great made... story. what a great, yeah. I mean, I'd say great story, but I mean, the great, the great thing is the, is the, the way you've gone through all of these like hardships yeah. and you just, you just grinded through and then, to where you are now, right? I mean, what a brilliant, what a brilliant credit, man. I mean, it's it's great. The hardest, the hardest thing all that, like, what was even madder is I, I ended up getting on this journey and I built a school. And I first built my first school um, 
in 2015, I basically partnered with the company. They figured out I could do Marvel engineering that I'd learned and come up with this new solution, a way of, of, of basically creating energy packs. And I was like, I've got this idea. I can combine energy construction and, and IoT to build self-sustaining lives of the future and train people in mere hours to build huge proof, hurricane proof, energy of homes that will last forever. Um, but then I ended up getting screwed over and then I was living in the summer house. And then all of a sudden at the age of like <clears throat> 23, I was, I had a really, I had an outbreak of really rare version of psoriasis. It's not only condition with erythodermis psoriasis trigger. Um, and it covered my body 90 percent burns basically. And I was in hospital for four days and I lived with that condition before I shut my immune system down for four, 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 four and a half, five years whilst developing all this journey. And so, you know, I, I, <laughs> I've had this mad <laughs> journey. Yeah, I've had this mad journey. But you know what? In pain, you can realize what suffering is. And, and there's a phrase, a Buddhist phrase of dukkha. Um, and it's the third phrase, and it's, it's the Buddhist principle. And it's, it's suffering is suffering. You know, you can be someone like me, and my birth skin was burning off, and I went through all this pain. But that, you can have a rich person that walked to the shops and started raining to buy a pack of bags, and they're going to actually get themselves as something that's going to damage their life. But in their mind, they're suffering. And we realize that our mind is our capacity. And only by understanding that suffering is suffering can you enlighten yourself to drag yourself through the hardship. And it's about that knowledge of you're not alone. And people aren't. And if you can go help someone, I'm sure that they'll help someone on from that. And if you can create things for people, then hopefully you can come to see your own mind that the suffering is worth it because you made change. And that's yeah. where I drive from. And you know, we're smashing it now. So <laughs> I mean, I guess like the funny you've gone through such hard stuff growing up, right? That anything you encounter now, it's it's you know, not oh, yeah. difficult. You've yeah. You've been in uncomfortable situations more times than you I know than you care to remember. I can't go into too much here, but I've been in situations where you know I've my life is on the line, and you know you're on the street, and you know, and it, you, you get these situations, these mad situations occur because it's that side of life, you know, that kind of low side of life, body, you know, everyone's doing anything to make money, and, and and people get in trouble, and you get caught up in, in situations and people, and you don't really know, and and like it's it's mad it's it's just a mad mad thing you know what I mean? and you kind of reflect on it i'm like well what scares me you know i can go live in a tent and build a ten of eight beings mate and i'm good so and what i do it for is the purpose is the reason the utopia is called economic and environment utopia i realized without economy. Did, yeah, just to wind back a little bit how did yeah. you get from how did you get to the utopia idea yeah so like this the is little what, tradition I wanted to make change, yeah? So I started this like music label thing. Cause I was at the time when I was, you know, in and out of housing and I had a really good friend, um, Carl, and I was sleeping on his studio floor from time to time, right? So we just write music. I did a bit of poetry, you know, I'm not a musician, I'm not a rap artist as much as some people like think, you know, they are. I was like, you know, just in the studio with my boys, like, you know, identifying some keys and that, learning production. And I was like, look, man, I think you're doing this wrong. And I, I come up with that idea and I was like, I think you should be doing this process. And, all of a sudden i started emerging this ability again to really re get, retain knowledge and identify strategic process that was always successful and it amalgamated that i managed to get him his desired um clothing company endorsement for free um of a company that don't do endorsements and i started then a media company and i realized that media is everything and and that follows over to Utopia. We do a lot of media. I shot a Namibia documentary. We've got it, it, documents coming out about our Middle East development, about stuff we've done in Asia, about what we're doing in America. About and so I'm very media centric because I like to you know give people the story, i.e. here. Um, yeah. And and I just kind of and then all of a sudden I was like, you know, this isn't going to make change. But why don't I apply these skills to something I know? And I remember being a kid and my dad was when I before he whatever but um before fuckery um if i can say that sorry you might have to beat some this out um but yeah before madness um he had me doing electrical and mechanical installs and at engineering so i i already had in the back of my knowledge and i didn't realize how much knowledge i had in the back of my head as a kid so then i was like well, what about i i don't i look at buildings and i'm like they're built wrong right she's fundamentally you know, buildings and if you, I, I look at it and i go this wrong like you're using the wrong systems using gas central boilers using this using this why aren't you using ac why aren't you using SLC pumps why aren't you using renewable energy as a power source, what's going on? And I just started studying built environments. I started studying a bit of architecture online. I studied gaming engine design for graphic. Uh, wow. I studied uh, thermodynamics, looking into isothermal air compression and how storage is done and the principles of that and how that exists and, and started learning from people like, there's a guy I met, Jean-Luc Morissette. Um, he's like, you know, a professor in thermodynamics and him started learning, you know, started learning. And I realized that fundamentally, I think I've got a solution. I think if I combine energy usage, um, energy, 
uh, production and, and energy storage with a construction material with an IoT device. I can make the same build principles on any building type in the world and I can do it in, in mere hours and it will, it will be the highest yielding asset in the world. So then the utopia method started coming up and I was like, well, what am I trying to do here? I'm trying to build environments. I'm trying to create a utopia. Okay, cool. I can't build a utopia. So I was like, okay, well, utopia is economic, it's environmental. What does utopia mean then, Joe? And I'm like, well, if you think about it, economics, capitalists, right? If you want to make money, you want to make the world go around, like that in that way, in that sense, you've got to have scalability and affordability. Affordability means all different things all, all around the world. You've got to have scalability because selling a thousand is not enough. There's seven points, something billion, eight billion people or whatever there is on the planet now, and it's going up. So how do you make impact change? So I was like, cool, well, scalability and affordability, boom. What's the environment? And then I looked at the environment, sustainability, pay its carbon debt. Fortunately, our houses are the equivalent, and this is a cool fact, our houses are the equivalent of taking, planting 2.7, 2.3 hardwood trees per square meter, or over a more or a mortgage life, it's the equivalent of taking a Boeing 737 out of the air for 1,861 hours because they're energy positive. So I, we basically reverse climate change. Yeah. And so I was, well, that's a sustainable angle. Cool. But then to understand what, what sustainability, what environment really meant, it's like more about the built environment and, and, and social adaptability. So I put myself in about 10 grand debt um, when I was living in an office. And I did. Tra I went travel from the Jiangsu province on a budget. I went right. to the Jiangsu province and... Um, I started, I went on Alibaba, yeah. I isolated all these different technologies. So I wanted to learn how people react and what built environments like. So I've messaged all these building companies and building material companies and energy providers and solar companies and IoT companies. I translated the Chinese to English on Alibaba. I emailed them, got them all set up an agenda meeting for two weeks. And I flew out and traveled to the Jiangsu province, going to all the factories and learning about built environments, yeah. Um, <laughs> it was a mad <laughs> experience. And um, That's been crazy. I realized actually what, what fundamentally it means then when you look at environment is social acceptability. It meant some people want it smart, but some people want it dumb, but they both need technology, right? So they've all got to have electronics. Some people want it brick, but some people want the same building to look like concrete, but it's the same building environment, it's the same footprint. So that came to the final point of environment, which is social acceptability. So then when I'm developing my energy construction and intelligent technologies, I always think in my head is like, well, are they utopian? Are they going to build a circular economy in the end? And are they going to be scalable and affordable? And are they going to be sustainably impactful? And are they going to be socially acceptable or, or versatile? And yeah. doing that, I've now got a product that's so versatile that I can build any built environment in the world. It'd be the highest building and do it in no time at all. We train six locals to build a superstructure that's hurricane proof in three hours in Namibia. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you go. Uh, we well fundamentally the system can go as high as any conventional system using pod mechanisms, but you know, we go up to six stories at the moment. You know, I've got an, I've got a vertical sky village that I'm planning in, in the next few years that will probably be 40, 50 stories. Um, and we're looking at garden communities and garden cities and circular economy. You know, we're looking at taking the waste from people the way we develop with them and reusing the waste, breaking it back down and using our building tools. Amazing. We, uh, yeah, man. So we're doing the whole utopia thing. And that that is utopia. You know? And that's where I've come from. And I suppose I'm a bit of a different beast because I'm, I'm thinking about things like the end game is change. And by making change, you fundamentally, and good positive change, making positive yeah. change, um, and taking the principles of my life into consideration, you, 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 you read the fine things, and, and you, you do it with the right mindset, you do it for the right damn reasons, and by doing that, you make capital. And, and that is success, you know, some people define success by money, some people design success by happiness, some people design success by, you know, saving the planet. Fortunately, I've, I've, I've seemed to have hit something that does all three. And that gives me a great sense of pride and a great just sense of feeling. Um, you, I've shared it sounds like more than that, speaking to, like, from talking to you, that you enjoy the process, right? Of like you spoke, you speak so enthusiastically about you know, going to China, doing the research and then starting to, to deliver on what you and what you dreamt you wanted to do. So mm -hmm. it's great. I mean, it sounds like you found something that really motivates and inspires you. Um, and you just get, yeah. like, it feels feels like you've got so much energy for it. Yeah, man. And, and it's another thing as well, like even to the point where like, you know, I people like usually see success in our environment as like vertically integrated. I'm like, dude, you can't do everything, right? So we call it holistically integrated. Why? Yo, you're not the master of all things. If you come together, you get all the best people together with the best intentions. You do get good out of it. You just need some strategy. You just need a good reason. And if the reason to save the planet and if the reason isn't to make people happy, is a reason to make people's lives better isn't good enough, then don't work with us. But we want to create change. We want to do good things to people. We want to make people feel proud of what they do. And that is the company's heart. You know, it's, our tagline is creating community. We, we're not just a house builder. We want to create community. You know? 
and um, we've got great people, and more people are getting involved. And I want to, you know, we want to spread the message. We want people, to, hey, come and come and join this utopian message, man. You know, government are doing great things right now. That's amazing. You know, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a difficulty at the end of it. Let's come together, load some cool futures. Let's have energy positive built environments. Let's love our homes. Let's love our people. Let's let's build better schools. Let's just enjoy it. Let's go together as a humanity. Stop killing stuff. And just realize that we, we as humans have taken advantage and just be together do you know what i mean and just just be yeah. nice to each other just be kinder the world could definitely yeah, do with it. Kindness, you know but i think like you know all of that said i think i think the silver lining with this uh, with this pandemic is that there's some great stories of communities coming together here we've got like a local facebook anyone need yeah. any help just message me i can drop some food off um, there's some, although well, you don't hear it in the news, there's so many positive stories of people doing things like manufacturing PPE equipment and like it's just so much stuff that's going on. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab something quickly. My mumsy did sign, yeah, um, and it's mad because she works in the job, like I said, yeah, she's from her, her life, and she started this group, right? Imagine random acts of kindness, Facebook, yeah, she started this group, she got one point five thousand members, nice, over like in a couple. Of weeks. And, but that's that point you just said you know what i mean it's like she goes on a job center and what's people losing jobs and actually do you know what yeah the silver lining is, is we're all going man do you know what i don't know my neighbor's name and we've never had a chat and that's a bit weird and i'm now stuck in this house and i don't know anyone in the street or in my building why and i just think you know and i think again it comes back to policy policy programs at the end of this or, or during this we've got to say you know when you're building these these future cities and gardens make sure there's park spaces Make sure there's yeah. enough space for kids to learn. Give everyone a free iPad or a free tablet and give them free access to education. Let them do it at home. They'll learn. It's inquisitive. People are curious to be told when to learn. Let's just let people involve. And I, I do think that this is a silver line. And I do hopefully, you know, it's such a devastating time. Like I said, I lost my, I think, you know, my nanny has been finalized and confirmed as detailed yet, but she had respiratory issues. She went into hospital within 24 hours. Um, yeah. She passed away. And it's hard. And it's like you know, with all these individuals, if you consider what what would their thoughts be around us becoming a better, better community because of it? And I tell you what, for me personally, because I can't speak for the world, but for me personally, if it affected me in that way, I would just want to make sure what I left behind was was was, was nicer, you know. And I think we need to at at, at, at people level, consumer level, at people level as human, and at government levels and at global level, realize we've just got to put aside our differences, you know what I'm saying, and just come together. Yeah. Definitely. But also the way the way the cities are designed here and the way that work has been going, it's conducive to like you leave early. You don't really see anyone in your street. You're in a block of flats, right? But you might never see anyone. You might have almost no human contact with people that you're living next door to. So it'd be great to see these buildings designed where it encourages people, neighbours to like exist together, become friendly, do things for each other. We are we're looking at the moment, so we we're high like I said, we're high percent we're just on the production lines two thousand units. I'm, I'm working in some bits in America, I've done bits in Africa. What we're looking at now is like when we're looking at the government, how is it mixed use programmed? And if you're doing building on high rights, how is it mixed use, right? My dream is like it, everyone lives in an apartment, yeah. Or oh, right, like an apartment, but if you live in an apartment, right? Everyone that lives in an apartment, bro, I would love nothing more than to go in and walk in and it's got like a uh, whole foods kind of based vegetable kind of lovely locally produced food. Um, on the left hand side, I've got a work style, you know, work working space. Um, yeah. I've, I've got a beautiful little restaurant on the top floor with a garden, with a garden on top of the restaurant and the hospitality on the top floor. So you go upwards for your hospitality and a bit of breathing air and go on the green space. You go down as you in the building, you interactivity with people, the gym, and you become a community because you're living in, in these pieces, not just building archaic towers. And when you're building landscapes, villages, and communities. You know, make sure that every household has enough space to have a digital. What happened to digital cash? What happened you know, because we got in and out of home? We've all isolated ourselves. In, we've been isolating ourselves for a very long time on our devices. You know, we've been working together. We're all sitting behind a computer. We're all not talking. So what happened to these community spaces? What happened to you know? Everyone wants to go big outlets for shop, and everyone wants to shop online. What happened? And it's like, well, actually, we should, what happened is everyone started developing it as if those things are essential. So when you do walk down the street, but from any other development, mostly, but for the most part, you know, not everything is involved, but for the most part, it's corridors and, and, and cold sets. And it's like, well, yeah. we're going to communicate because kids ain't going to play in the road, are they? So let's think and let's place make and let's build communities that people want to interact in. 
if I want to watch Netflix, why haven't I got free data like a, like a cost of coffee, yeah? Why can't I can watch Netflix on my iPad in the park? Because then I'm in a park, I'm outside. Why, why are we engaging in new technologies with old technology? Why aren't we adopting peer to peer ride sharing with autonomous vehicles? Because it's not expensive to, to build that infrastructure. You know? And, and we, we are at the forefront of that. And we've got to build this. You know what I mean? We've got to. I'm very passionate about it, as you can tell, because I, I see it every day. And it's right, great. Right. I, think, I think this pandemic thing could be just a, like a big shot of steroids to this this trend. Because yeah. it's, it's a trend that's been that's been building steam. Mm. And and I hope I hope this will really like kick it in, kick it like sooner. Because yeah. you've got people are going to change the way they work now. Not everyone's going to want to go in five days a week. Some people are going to want to do work from home. So these these like environments that you're going to build where you can you can go out for some air, you can live, you can work, but communally, like maybe you're down in the coffee shop downstairs and you've got John from upstairs, Jane from over there. You're like, hey, what's up? How you doing? You do a bit of work. And you know the irony is as well, some of the, every big startup that you ever speak to, they have that community, but only for their employees. Can you imagine what would happen if we empowered our own communities to be collaborative on efforts and the technologies and the innovations and the drive and the ethos and, and the passion that would come from from Joanna and Josanna, whatever, talking to, to Pete and David downstairs having a coffee because they live in the same building. Why do you choose the green building? And curiosity feeds the mind and we'll become, we we'll start discussing things, you know? It's true. Because even though, I mean, people talk about work from home and things like that, but we're still like, we're still, we're still like social animals. Like yeah. humans need human contact. Well, you know, it, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Just going back to your like starting your business because I'm interested. Like you, you hear, obviously you were from a like a low socioeconomic background to start, and and I speak to a lot of people and 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 sometimes they miss like the ability or just they don't dream big enough often, yeah. um, and it's it's quite hard to, to to get over that. I mean, and you you've done that great. I mean, what what was the the toughest bit? Like I guess you had to raise cash. Ooh, uh, um... <laughs> I mean, how did it all go? um no you know what it was the hardest bit was getting off the ground the hardest bit you know i don't think there is a hardest bit i think i think there's been a hard moments you know i mean it, you know we have i had one of the best mentors in lord stanley think basically a, 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 a mutual friend of ours um rest his soul um philip francis passed away um and he's a very close I'm a very close friend of mine, and we've been to know each other, and 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 Lord Thing knew him, and 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 I know Ringo is far very well now, and um, I we would I was talking with Philip about how my business was going, about how I'm building the school, and I'm in, and he was he was tutoring me in a way, and and unfortunately when he passed, I was like, Look, I'm not going to speak to his family, like I'm you know in that manner, you know we are friends, this is this is not a business thing. About a year later, after the passing, I got a phone call from a mutual friend and was like, look, how come you haven't spoken to, to Alex or Stanley Fink? And I was like, well, because, you know, I didn't really feel that was ethical. Um, he's my mate. I'm not, that's not, that's just not in my bones. You know what I mean? It's not my DNA to capitalize like that. It's just not me. And he was like, look, do you mind me raising a meeting? I met Alex. Alex was like, mate, do you know what? I think get all of it. And I don't think anyone needs to even to this day does, by the way. But what you're saying, if it works out, mate, you, you could be onto something gold here. Um, yeah. I met Stanley Fink and... Uh, Stanley was like, you know, if if you make a percentage of what you plan to, and your goals and your dreams and your vision, Joe, you'll be a very, very, very successful human being. Um, and he, at the time, you, imagine me. I'm very fast now, right? I and mean, I take my time at certain things, but and I, I've become more educated and 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 more knowledgeable, right? But imagine me. I was like an untapped fountain of knowledge, yeah, that was on hydro max five all the fucking time. <laughs> Right, so they had, we had to finesse that a little bit, and, and he raised capital. We saw the potential, um, continued to support me, helped me buy the first site, and that became a part of the Vision for 2050 campaign, which is it's now the highest performing site in Britain, um, built with a pace. We, we average house every three days in superstructure, and um, they're all we broke the EPC ratings. You know, EPC on the fridges, we broke we broke it. We got 105 out of 100, just smashed it <laughs> on one of the buildings, and and then. Um, through uh again a mutual contact that lord think um i put me in touch with i met with deborah rubin one of the most wonderful women and it was through through a mutual friend luba another wonderful woman and they were working luba um and and, and deborah uh, rubin were, were working and discussing around a, a charity project that they wanted me to be involved in and i met deborah and deborah heard about my life and she's like joe wow like what the this is insane um yeah. and is it all real and then i met you know 
the family members and and one of them that I hold, hold very dearly uh I don't want to drop too many names but one of them very dearly started like coaching me and was like yeah, a little bit more and was like Joe you know you're not a startup here you know we need to get into the crux of this and I met David Rubin a wonderful man um and the family further and got got, got to know the family more um, and then they supported me and obviously the Rubens are, are one of the most successful families yeah. in history um and now between you know the room family and the think family i have i have knowledge and, and experience well beyond my own years and i take time to listen to them um all of the things and all of the rubens you know i'm very close friends with with all of the things um the sons and and very close i like to think with with rubens and um that support has enabled me to to capital to capitalize on my goals and it's accelerated it all um proving things like I did, you know like i did in namibia and the un are recognizing i'm and being featured in the UN 75th anniversary ICE book. For, so I, I, and it's weird because like, you know, we've got the prospects and we've got the outlook of like, a, we've been referred to as the Tesla of housing, um, we've been referred to Apple here and then, but we've only built one development because what it is, if, if I can prove I can do it the absolute best and scale my manufacturing by the time we've done this tap on, and when we do need to build 20,000 hours at the end, this, you know, any pandemic or, or the world is in, you know, England with a 4 million housing deficit, I can turn that tap on unlike anyone has ever scaled before. Yeah. Um, it's that support and those people believing in young tech startups and believing in me. And, you know, they saw that I was an abundant amount of energy, but what they saw is it was a combination of an untapped intelligence and passion and a willingness to listen and learn. And there are people like that out there. And, and the only advice I can give people, if you're looking at it, is that be passionate about what you do and listen to those. You get a lot of people that are really talented and really passionate they can be really arrogant and not realize that there's someone that's done this 20 years before you you may have the version 2.0 mate but you've just got a long way to go and to not trip over yourself just have a little listen to those guys you're gonna fuck up like trust me. i yeah. mess up all the time like i've got a board now and i'm like oh my god yeah, that's like, cool you learn from that you learn you from go, that you go, you go and so so yeah just keep the passion really listen to learn and realize yo dude dude it's it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna go wrong at times it's not about how it goes wrong it's about you recover about thinking about how you don't panic and combine that passion with that with that, with that knowledge and that hunger and people will see it and they do see it you've got yeah. to get in the right i mean having a mentor is awesome asking for help is is a powerful thing and also the other thing is it's great that so many people like that are willing to like send the elevator back down right and help mm -hmm. people that they identify as being high potential or needing help or whatever and just connecting both together Lord Fink is one of the most kindest people I've met, and and he he's you know he was the godfather of uh, hedge funds they call him you know uh, as a reference and, and he's not a thousand percent keen on that but he was CEO of Man Group and he's the biggest listed hedge fund, and for a man of that level of of capitalism the kindness from his heart and the way that he educates um, his individuals and his his students I'd say and the way that he invests his portfolio now is is more than commendable because. In my opinion, it's people like Stanley and then the Ruby setting the benchmark um, on it. And I'm evidence of it. You know, that I don't think there's a story like mine at the moment out there um, with this kind of level of, 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 of capitalist investment people, yeah. but the social view. And it's, I hope it's, the trend has been happening. It's been happening a lot in Silicon Valley. Um, yeah. The UK has not seen it that much. I think there is a trend coming now. You're seeing a lot more investment going to these tiny companies. A lot more focus on green social, but you know, sensible green social. I.e., it makes money, but it also makes the world spin a bit faster and a bit better. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah and it's yeah, it's, it's it's amazing to have these people, man. It's, it's don't run. Oh, you learn a lot very fast. So yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. It's just good. It's good you surrounded yourself with people that you know that um, that can teach you stuff that have got experiences in different places that you can draw on, and it's the way to do it. It's been yeah. it's really good. Yeah, yeah, man. What's your um, what's your plan for the future now? We have I can't say because my brand there's so many things on the horizon, man. I want to tell you all of them. Um, what are your, like top three, your top three key like most three, exciting things. Top three most exciting things. One, right. So I, I'm not going to mention exactly what they are. I'm going to talk about the topic now. Um, all right. I've got I love I love this kind of creative discussion, you know. But um, I have a brand, a strategic partnership to brand director for a reason, you know. Um, <laughs> And I got a board that keep me, you know, under lock and key. Um, one, we just signed a deal with a top five company in the world regarding technology. It's going to be released next month. We'll be the first company in our in our in our sector to have a backing of a major, major, major tech company from the UK. Um, it will change the game for technology in houses. That's one. Two, 
I've made, I've proven that I can build any new building and make it offset carbon. There's something in play coming to market that's going to make every single home energy positive and net zero. Boom. Yeah. Um, three, there's something on the horizon that's coming that's going to revolutionize the planning industry globally forever that we've developed as a software. Wow. Um, so there's three things that are happening around us now that are going to groundbreak. You know, my goal is a cool. So, like, I did the development piece, wicked. Now I've got the tech piece that's going to go global, wicked. Then I want to look at how do I mean, there's a lot of existing homes. Let's have let's tackle that. We've already got it in play. And then the other one is like, how do I now give access to the eight billion humans on the planet? This technology you know yeah um uh, and give them access to these housing kind of technologies and, and all that so yeah beautiful man good luck it's great to speak to you thanks for sharing a story um, <laughs> good luck with everything thank you bro appreciate it everyone nice. keep good keep safe at this time and um i look forward to our next encounter definitely face it hopefully face thanks man see ya Cheers.